Hi, and welcome to Meet a Google Researcher, a series where we get to meet some folks who are advancing the state of the art in helpful technology, tackling some incredibly difficult problems. I'm Drew Calcagno, and I'll be your host. Today, we're going to dive into one of Google Research's text to image models, Parti. As a refresher, text image models like Parti are AI systems for creating illustrations and pictures from text prompts. It's a combination of language models and image generation. And the quality of these models is new and more impressive than anything we've seen before. This model, Parti, is an autoregressive model, whereas Google also made Imagine a diffusion model. We'll get into the differences in a bit. Now we're going to explore some more specifically about the folks behind this Parti model, Yonghui Wu and Jiahui Yu. Welcome. Yonghui and Jiahui, I'm so glad that you're here. Thanks for having us. Jiahui, could you um, introduce yourself and tell us a little about? Yeah, sure. I'm Jiahui. Uh, I'm a research scientist in Google Research Brain Team, working with many colleagues uh, across Google on machine learning for speech, for language, for computer vision, and for their interactions. So I firstly joined Google at around 2019 mm -hmm. as an intern, and then later converted as a full time for about three years now. I worked around on speech related problems for the first year and a half and later on, more recently, into the uh, multimodal image text vision language related problems to advance research and to land those new technologies into products. That's so intriguing. And I can't wait to hear some more. But Yonghui, tell me about you. Mm, yeah, sure. So uh, I'm Yonghui. So I have been at Google for about 14 years. So wow. it's quite a long time. So uh, for the first six years, I, I was on search team. I mm, worked on improving Google's search ranking algorithm uh, for the last eight years. Uh, I, mm, I, I'm on the uh, Google Research Brain Team, so I work on a lot of uh, uh, AI topics uh, spanning NLP, speech, and computer vision. Uh, myself and my team have been also focusing on landing research innovations into Google products. I am so thrilled by all of the different applications that you've been doing. Um, orient me around these ones, though, with text to image. So where are we with text to image? And we can get into Parti in a little bit. Yeah, sure. So uh, text to image models, as the name suggests, are AI systems which can generate images based on text prompt. So they they are solving the inverse problem of image captioning, where so given an image, the task is to come up with natural language descriptions to describe the image. So uh, to interact with with the text to image model, so the user need to uh, provide a text prompt. Uh, the text prompt can be a really short one. For example, a cat reading a, reading a book which is actually so the text prompt we often use to test our model. So whenever we train a new model or we put up a new demo, so this is often the first, first prompt I try to make sure our demo or model is not completely broken. So, mm, so the, text, the text prompt can be also a really complex one. So the prompt can contain a few sentences which give detailed description of the setting, mm -hmm. uh, the relationship the relationship between different objects, and sometimes maybe even more detailed. So actually, so there's a, there's an image. So yeah, we have all of these. Yeah, the the for example, the image, the kimchi on on top of stir fried tofu. So this is produced from a fairly complex uh, text prompt. I can so, only imagine. Yeah. So if I remember correctly, so the text prompt is something like so, uh, kimchi on top of stir fried tofu on top of a white plate. Yeah. The white plate is uh, on top of a wooden table. So a pair of uh, silver chopsticks on the side of a plate. So interior lighting, zoomed in view, high quality photo. So wow, so this is not just like something that randomly occurred. You are really like engineering this prompt into making exactly what Basically, you want. Basically, so trying trying to get uh, as much detail into a prompt to really describe the scene you want to get out of the text to image model. So. Mm. Uh, mm, and so, as you can see from this one, so the result is actually so really beautiful. So, yeah. Mm, so yeah. So combining the recent progress uh, in large language model and also deep generative image models, we have seen a breakthrough in text-to-image technologies. Uh, mm, State-of-art text-to-image models such as Party and Imagine mm -hmm. are capable of understanding really complex long text prompts and being able to generate images of really high quality and photorealistic. So yeah. for some Im images, so mm, actually, so we are having a hard time to tell them apart from the real photos. So mm, yeah, so I'm really, mm, really excited about the new technology. And so I think so, what you can, 
what people can get out of those uh, taxonomic models are only bounded by your imagination, like so, mm, what you can put into the prompts. Like yeah. Yeah. one of these animals drinking coffee and reading a book on a yacht or yeah, the yeah, yeah. kimchi or you know any of these, mm -hmm. it, it's uh, yeah. truly unbelievable. Yeah. And That's why they, yeah. with all that excitement, can you, Jiahui, tell me a little bit more about what Parti does? Um, I know that there's other models out there. I've uh, played around with the Imagine and Parti demos. Um, I've seen Dolly 2 online and, and Mid Journey, and um, I heard about Stable Diffusion. But what's what's this one? Yes, uh, definitely. So Parti is a short name, first of all, for the Pathways Autoregressive Text to Image Model. Okay. So it, as the name tells, it takes text, the human language, as inputs. Mm -hmm. and produce images that are both visually realistic and aligns well with the text. So we know in the previous session, we also discussed with many of the diffusion models, like Google's Imagine model, um, which also produce really amazing results by progressively denoising from random noise step by step. And there are also rapid progress being made in diffusion model, um, like also external community, mm -hmm. DALI2, uh, mid-journey, stable diffusion. And Part T, on the other hand, is an autoregressive model. And what that effectively means is it treats the text image effectively as a sequence to sequence problem. Okay. Very similar to machine translation. So we know machine translation takes English as the inputs mm -hmm. and translate them into, for example, um, target language French. And now with the Parti model, instead of translating to French, we're translating the English text as inputs to the visual language or the image tokens. And what effectively we need here is image tokenizer that encodes an image into a sequence of discrete units. And with that, we can produce the outputs exactly the same way as machine translation. So we hope such a simplified view of both image and text as tokens can help us further unify more image text related tasks and leverage the power of many of the language models. And our long-term vision is also aligns with what Pathways also present at Google, mm -hmm. where we hope the machine learning model can handle many tasks at once and also learn new tasks easily and also reflects a better understanding of the world. There's so many fields going on right now. I mean, you were talking about language and how you've uh, learned from different translation efforts, and now you're treating imagery like its own language. Um, have you been both working in other fields and you applied that here? Or is it something that you know, you've know you already uh, started net new? Mm, yeah, actually, so uh, thinking about uh, text to image problem in the context of framework machine translation is actually really natural and comfortable to me. So I myself have been working on machine translation for quite a long time. And so I was uh, one of the core developer of Google Neural Machine Translation System, oh, wow. so which got deployed in Google Translate in 2016. So the, mm, the launch of a Google Neural Machine Translation System gave a really huge leap to the translation quality. And it, it was estimated the quality improvement from this single step was bigger than previous 10 years combined. Really? So yes, it was really kind of a huge leap in technology for machine translation. And so I, I know that for Google's other approach, imagine there you kind of start with pure noise and then you uh, create an image from it. This seems like it's not maybe the opposite approach, but it's uh, a bit sequential. It's like you're building towards some common mathematical language that then creates an image uh, from the start. Is that reasonable? Yeah, so it's a, it's a quite different view of uh, image creation process. So image, mm, so imagine is a kind of a, mm, it's a iterative. Uh, in the sense of iterative in the latent space, you start from a random noise, you yeah. gradually adding more details versus this autoregressive model is uh, iterative in kind of a pixel order. You start from the first pixel at the top left corner, and as so you gradually draw one line by line. So mm, uh, it's a surprising, so it's uh, not a natural process for people to draw image, but a surprising, this works really well. That is so cool. And when you think of you know the first time that uh, you saw an image being generated, was it you know pixel by pixel, or is it you know it all flurries in all at once? Um, what was that like? And tell me about how it does it. Yeah, pixel by pixel generation is more like internal inside the model. What okay. we see is really <laughs> an image output <laughs> suddenly. Yeah. And, and what was what was that like when you first got the first image, Jiahui? Was it um, something that you could recognize, or was it you know something uh, indecipherable at first? So yeah, we started the project like two years ago. 
And we start with a very small model and okay. trying to overfit on a small amount of data. So this is a good way for us to debug. And the first image is not really something kind of creative or something new. It's just from the training data. Mm -hmm. And as long as we see the image, we know that our implementation and our end-to-end -end pipeline is working. So that's the first moment we see the image. Do you remember um, what some of the uh your favorite images that you first created were? I mean, I know you we have these in back of us here, but um, yeah. So the first image in the first kind of a text prompt I try is always a cat reading a book. Yeah, you mentioned that's the cats. Like, <laughs> that's always the first one we try. So uh, mm, actually, so uh, talking about the, the kind of uh, images, right? So the excitement moment of images, actually. So so there was a one moment where so these are create, created a lot of a kind of excitement on the team. So basically, so uh, mm, we had a bug in our decoder. So, and so this bug had prevented us from obtaining much better result than we could. So, right. mm, so basically, so we, uh, Jack and I were kind of uh, really surprised by some unexpected results. And so we were uh, kind of suspecting and chasing a bug for a long time, but to no avail. So we were about to give up. And then so on a late Saturday night uh, debugging with Jia Hui, at about it, at about 11 p.m., so we finally realized what went wrong, and so we quickly fixed the bug and then ran some experiments. And so at about 1 a.m. on Sunday morning, we got the new results, and we were really shocked by the quality of the new results. So it's uh, so much better than what we had before. So we quickly shared the result to our team members over the weekend and on, on Monday, and so everyone was so excited. So that is so cool. Yeah, that's I a really amazing weekend, and uh, <laughs> yeah, every team member is so excited about it next Monday when we show the results. Oh, wow. Yes. I, I feel like all of these uh, major breakthroughs happen some weird like nighttime hour. Mm, um, yeah. it's, I, uh, it's also kind of to the point where you're about to give up, and yeah. so you had this breakthrough. And, then, so. Yeah. And, and so when that moment happened, did you feel like anything you know, changed for you? Do you find yourselves to be creatives now? Um, I feel like this type of work is breaking down you know, philosophically strict definitions. Yeah, mm, I mean, so so it's a really kind of a satisfying moment for me. Yeah. Right? So I myself have a really hard time to really convert my ideas into say visual pictures, right? Now with tour like party and imagine, so what I can do is actually so I can convert my ideas into language, and the tour can take the next step for me, so to convert the language into pictures. So definitely, so definitely, so those tours are kind of allow me to do something I wasn't able to do before. Do you feel the same, Jiahui? Yeah, are I feel you... almost the same, yeah. That's a sad moment, but across the course of the project, we have multiple kind of such milestones. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, we start from overfitting the training set, and then we gradually try to scale up the model to 3 billion, we see a quality jump. Um, that's, I believe, is probably best quality at that time. And 3 and, billion, is that parameters in the model? Yeah, sorry, yeah, 3 billion is in terms of parameter size of the okay. model. So our small model is around millions of parameters, and then we scale up. And, and then more parameters feasibly mean more intricacy in the model, more ability to make yes, a more ability great image. to learn the knowledge mm. from the data. So um, we also suddenly realized the importance of image tokenizer, as I previously mentioned, because we are trying to translate the um, image as the tokens. So we try to improve the image tokenizer, propose some new methods, and also share it with the research community. I think that's another milestone. And probably the final, um, not final, but the next milestone is on scaling up further because every element is ready, every piece is ready. We scale further to 20 billion parameters. Wow. And you see, that's our, almost yeah, our final model. One of our latest improvement is also coming, came from combination of the strengths of the image model hmm. to the party model. So we now produce low resolution images with the party model and use imaging for super resolution. That's also bring another gem. So they're starting to work together. You all and the Imagine team are, are finding yeah. what's mm -hmm. best in is Party, it, what's mm -hmm. best in Imagine. Yeah, so basically, so we're trying to kind of uh, combine the best of uh, both worlds. So they are, as, as we discussed, they are, they are really kind of different techniques. Right? What we found Imagine model uh, is doing particularly well is uh, in super resolution. Like, okay. So mm, from, uh, say, lower resolution image of uh, 256 times 256 into a high resolution, 1K by 1K. So image model is so much better than this uh, party model. 
Like so in the kind of as Zhang Hui in, uh, in hinted, so the, in the latest step, so what we did is actually, so we asked a party to produce a lower resolution image in 256 by 256, and then so we hook up the imagined super resolution model mm -hmm. to produce this 1K by 1K images. So those Im images you have seen here are actually so from the combination of both image and party models. Oh, wow, I didn't realize that. And in the combination, is that mitigating for like a resolution limitation within party? Like what is party best at and then what are its limitations? It sounds like yeah. you use both for different combinations. Yeah, mm, so basically, so party model, so as uh, mm, we mentioned, so it's an auto request model from left to right. Mm -hmm. So when images are kind of getting bigger, so it's more steps, so you need to take a longer time. So it's a more com computation kind of uh, mm, constraint on the model. Okay. So and so this step, so imagine model is said to be particularly better than party model. And so there are, of course there are other aspects where imagine model is better. But so for this combination, we are exploring so this imagine super resolution model uh, to combine with the party. So mm, to, to 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 get this kind of a really mm, interesting results. Yeah, and they and they really are like so intricate. I was playing around with your demos last night, and I um, wanted to see, you know, what I could make, and it was so fun to just, you know, mess around. I, I was putting in a, a goose drinking a cappuccino mm -hmm. in the style of Van Gogh. Mm -hmm. I think one of the most fun parts was when the goose was sitting in the coffee. Mm -hmm. on one of <laughs> and do you see limitations of our current <laughs> yeah. demo? It was so weird. Um, but going forward, um, Jahui, what are the future, or what is the future of uh, text image models and and party in that place? Yeah, we've seen uh, lots of improvements across the past few years in this domain. Let's say AI text to image synthesis, and we believe this trend of improvement will continue. Um, probably one specific thing I want to mention about future is right now what we are building and improving are open domain text mm. to image generation for both party and, and imagine. Um, where here yeah, open domain means the model basically can take anything in the forms of natural language. And I think one exciting future work would be how can we adapt those open domain text image models into some closed domain or domain specific applications. Mm -hmm. Like cat specific? Yeah, potentially <laughs> cat specific, yeah. yeah. And potentially to distribute the benefits of this model to more kind of applications okay. and make it more useful. And, and what are some of those uses? Uh, you know, kind of joking about the cats, and I know that's one of the ways that you do uh, model testing. But um, where are we seeing the future being applied? So um, I think so the kind of, uh, to me, so the biggest benefit of those kind of models is uh, so those kind of models significantly lower the bar for visual creation. Mm. Like for people like me, like so as I mentioned, so I'm having really hard time to convert my ideas into really images. Me too. Now, mm, <laughs> yeah. So now, so with models like Party and Imagine, so what we, what we can do is actually so we can convert our ideas into languages, and so those models can take take the next step for us to converting language into really visual drawing. And so another way I think about this is. Uh, like so machine translation is a kind of a bridging the gap between different languages, but the, this kind of tool is actually so bridging the gap between different modalities. Right. Like so it's a kind of a significant bridging the gap between language modality and the vision modality. So this is going to be really extremely useful for human beings. And it just keeps growing on knowledge across domain and the open domain, you were saying. Uh, so given all of that, do you see these types of models helping people's lives? Yeah, for sure. And, and and how do you think that it it could you know help folks find you know whether it's something artistic expression visual expression more accessible but um, what else is it in business is it in uh, other parts of the arts? Yeah, I think so. There's also uh, a lot of kind of business op business opportunities as well. Right, so mm -hmm. mm, some are being explored within Google, and so. As we know, so outside is uh, people are really big fan of those kind of text to image models. People like so I feel like so there, are, there are a lot of really smart people than we. Like, so we haven't really thought. I think you're pretty smart. <laughs> yeah. Mm, so we <laughs> smarter than me for sure. <laughs> yeah. So we we haven't really thought about like lots of a creative use of the model, but uh, many kind of smart people out there, so they can really explore the creative use of the model. So let me give you one example. So actually, so. Uh, mm, so one of uh, parties most enthusiastic user, so mm, so they have discovered so party is able to generate three sixty degrees panorama images. Wow! So all the way. Mm, all the way, yeah. 
and as those images can be post-processed to mm, to generate views from different angles, right? So this is not a capability we anticipated the model to have. So when we started to train the model, but uh, we were kind of uh, mm, really presently surprised. And so I believe so there are still a lot of opportunities or capability in the model, which we don't know yet. And so those are still to be explored by lots of users. Is video next beyond it or? Mm, I think so. I, I think so. Video is also a natural uh, next step. And so yeah. from our colleagues, right, Imagine team, so they have uh, already already showed some some mm, some capability feasibilities of uh, producing really high quality text to video models. So yeah. as well, well as other modalities like music, right? Yeah, in three D point clouds, potentially simulation. Those wow. are all possible. I think. I, I can't wait for all those, and I know that you're generating it at a, a pace that's. Um, with responsibility in mind and a lot of different um, guardrails. So um, when will people be able to start seeing uh, these models? I know it takes time. Oh, in seeing these models in terms of? Uh, like being able mm -hmm. to perhaps use them themselves. Will people be able to have, um, I know some models have gotten access, uh, not from Google, but I know that we're taking our time. Yeah, mm, so I think so. We are kind of uh, actually working on working on those. And so it's uh, kind of a step by step process. So first of the step is actually so open up the model for all Googlers to to play with them. And so we just managed to have this uh, Google White Dog food uh, like just a few days ago. Yeah. And so I think so. Mm, mm, as you said, so our AI responsible AI is extremely important. So we we want to open up the model for more people to access, but uh, we want to open up the model in a way which we kind of sufficient to address all the responsible AI requirements. So mm, we want to do it really in a kind of a cautious way. Mm -hmm. And so I think so. Mm, so this is something uh, we are still kind of actively exploring, see how best we can kind of unleash the power of the model for mm, for people outside of Google to also have access to. Well, I'm I'm waiting for that moment. I know I'll be patient. Yonghui, Jaihui, thank you so much for this awesome conversation today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for ha having us. Thanks. So today we took a deep dive into the Parti text to image model, a broad team effort to create amazing imagery from nothing more than a few words typed into a prompt. Stay tuned for more innovations and more episodes on helpful technology from Google Research coming soon. Mm -hmm.